Good timing, actually, uh, in between walking from my office to the hospital. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we, I want to just ask a few questions about the, obviously, the Tikar, to call it. Tikar. Tikar, uh, I believe, was uh, from the emails I saw with Carmen sent me, uh, uh, was a couple weeks ago or maybe three, the first procedure? Uh, I think it was uh, last week. It was last week, August okay. 28th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. August 28th. And um, can you, was it, to, go ahead, was it uh, one, more than one patient, or was it one patient only, or? It was two patients. It was two patients. Okay. Um, Dr. Libby Watch and I uh, collaborated. Okay. Uh, two vascular surgeons um, uh, that uh, we collaborated on doing the two patients um, uh, together, where we uh, sort of uh, teamed up at the vascular surgery team. Okay. Um, and the procedure is called a T-car procedure. Right, right. Yeah, and um, it's uh, it's a procedure that um, is been done to treat uh, carotid stenosis. Right. Uh, to prevent strokes. Now, I was uh, reading. I was reading up on it, and I understand that it's very interesting. I saw the animation and everything, and uh, from from what I understand, this, these are for high risk patients who are a high too probably too high risk for CEA, correct? Or, or um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm walking into like a really loud area. And okay. I, like, so it's gonna take me five seconds. If you if, I, if it's too loud, you can't hear me. Just wait. I'll, I'll be out of that. No, no, no problem. No problem. Um. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, the, yeah, right now, the procedure is indicated for patients who have what's called a symptomatic carotid stenosis. Right. Or, which is basically they've had, already had some symptoms related to their stenosis, which are usually like mini stroke type symptoms or TIA symptoms. Right, right. Um, or patients that are considered high risk for carotid surgery. Right. Um, carotid endarterectomy. Right. So, um, so basically people that are high risk for carotid endarterectomy have the option of having carotid surgery, but understanding that the risk is, uh, you know, higher. Right. Uh, or a, a traditional carotid stent procedure, correct? Uh, which is called also a, now sort of being just to clarify a transfemoral carotid stent, which is a carotid stent that is usually done um, uh, only by interventionalists, right? Or I should say that that is done um, by you know endovascular specialists, right? So TCAR is a carotid stent. But it's placed instead of transfemoral, meaning from the growing, it's placed uh, transparotid, meaning from the small incision at the base of the neck. Right, correct. Um, where the stent is delivered directly to the artery, you know, uh, just a few inches away from where the problem is. Now, I was reading the, and the really fascinating thing is this, this system, I guess the MPS or the neuroprotective system. Correct. It's designed That's to reduce. Three different. Right. Uh, reverse the blood flow away from the brain. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. And so the problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So the go problem ahead. with the. Okay, so the, the nice thing about carotid endarterectomy is that um, throughout the procedure, the uh, carotid artery is protected surgically. Right. So it's, it's, it's directly controlled to prevent anything breaking off um, into the brain during the procedure itself. Correct. Um, carotid stenting, the traditional carotid stenting coming from the growing, um, the, the actual problem, the lesion, um, has to be crossed to put a filter distal or you know higher towards the brain mm -hmm. than where the lesion is. And in the process of manipulating that lesion, uh, that's where we think those strokes occur. Okay. So, so you're actually, 
to put it, you know, plain words, when you're messing with the carotid lesion before you have an actual, uh, uh, before you're actually protected. And that's called distal protection. Okay. Hey, give me one second. Oh, how are you? How are you? This is one of them. This is good. The one better is across the street. The other building across the street? That one has better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. You got to right. make sure um, you get the right. <laughs> that's right. Hello, I know. I'm, a, I'm an um, expert, so I go. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go. So the... Um, so, so that's distal protect. I don't want to get. I don't know how much how technical. No, uh, I, it's it's just fascinating that I mean I, I think I've read where you want to protect obviously the brain from uh, loosened plaque or whatever flowing back into Correct. the brain. Correct. So this basically Correct. acts almost like a re reversal of flow is what really is fascinating because is that create any Correct. problems? What happens during that reversal of blood flow for the patient who's going undergoing the procedure? Does anything? I mean. So, yeah, so carotid standing, you have to actually manipulate the lesion before you've actually employed protection. Right. Um, before you, what's called uh, distal, distal protection. Right. And so in the T-CAR procedure, um, we create flow reversal, and it's called proximal protection because what we're doing is that any, anything that breaks off during the procedure is not going to the brain. It's getting sucked down uh, into the the sheath, which is part of the procedure, right? Um, so that you know, sometimes in the filter within the uh, the the neural protection system, you may see you know bits and pieces of, of plaque that are broken off right. during the procedure. Right. Um, and and in the second procedure, we did see a little plaque, which obviously never had a chance to go to the brain. Right. It went into the into the filter. Right. So, so um, you did see some there. Yeah. Yeah, but what's, what's, what's remarkable about these patients is that um, uh, they tolerate this re flow reversal extremely well. Really? So you would, th you would think that, uh, you know, the studies have done through Silk Road using transcranial Doppler, mm -hmm. where they show that this procedure, now this is some of their own material, but this procedure has the lowest amount of quote unquote hit to the brain of any of the procedures, including carotid surgery, right. like tra traditional carotid anorectomy. This is still carotid surgery, but it's a little bit different from the traditional and where you open up the lesion, clean it out, and it's, you know, is, fix the artery. Is this characterized as minimally invasive, this this procedure we're talking about now, TCAR? I, I, yeah. I would characterize it as, as a hybrid. Um, it's, it, it's, it is, uh, it's not the lowest invasive because the, the carotid stent is, is percutaneous. Right. Um, this procedure is a hybrid procedure, a hybrid of endovascular um, with a small cut down on the groin. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, cut down on the neck. Um, so it's not, uh, it, it's, it's still minimally, minimally invasive because you're not opening up the lesion itself. Right. Um, but it does require a little incision in the neck. So it's in between. Uh, it's in between the CEA and the and the and the and the traditional stenting from the groin. Basically, in between that, I guess. Is what, uh, correct. Okay. It, yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a it's a hybrid right. of the of the so the the, the 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 skills required for the procedure are a combination of of surgical skills of being able to cut down the carotid, but also endovascular skills of being able to you know place a stent across the lesion. Right. Right. And so. Um, uh, how long does I mean, it, I don't know how to, no no that's fine this is great uh, how long does it typically last I mean I don't know if in the case of the three of the two you did last week uh, so so the flow reversal time which is the time that we actually had the active flow reversal going right. during the procedure right um, in the very first case that we did was 14 minutes okay wow that's and in the second case was in the second case it was eight minutes wow that's pretty fast so right? yeah. yeah so that's that's not even working fast. That's just working carefully and uh, diligently. But, uh, okay. but the point is that you only have to put the flow reversal during the time that you're manipulating the lesion, which when you're accessing the carotid directly is very minimal. Right. And, you and know, so is there a maximum amount of time, a cap amount of time you want to keep that flow reversal going? Or do we know yet at, at this point? Uh, yeah. uh, hold on one okay. quick second. Hold okay. on one quick second. Oh, uh, never mind. They hung up. Um, is, yeah, is there uh, a limit as to time? So the, 
you know, the reco- time is it recorded. I've heard that people have been on it for more than an hour. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, but, but you know, that is, uh, and, and they've tolerated it well. Mm-hmm. Um, what they've seen is that what's important during the procedure is that the anesthesiologist, you know, maintains the blood pressure, um, you know, in a in a in an adequate range, right? So between typically between 140 and 160 when you're implementing the flow reversal, right? So one of the critical things is that you know you have a, you do have a team where the anesthesiologist keeps the patient's blood pressure high enough that tolerating the the um, tolerating the uh, flow reversal right. is uh, done. Right. So. Um, the and the amount of time flow reversal is very low. Right. right. Can Can you give me a, a oh, just hold a, on one quick second? Oh, sure. No, no one second. Sorry. No problem. Hello. Yes, I'm sorry. here. Uh, a brief um, A brief description without naming names uh, of the two patients, uh, the age and and the degree of uh, uh, stenosis, I guess, or or blockage or uh, any. Descriptions you can give me to to show the risk, the the state of the the carotid. So the, let's see here. I can get at the age. So the first one was born in nineteen forty eight. So that puts her at seventy seventy one years old. Seventy one. Yeah. 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 So she was seventy one year old former smoker diabetic. That's a she, right? Who had the she former which, smoker. Okay. She. Uh, yeah. With uh, with um, bilateral carotid stenosis requiring procedures, so she, so she has um, the, what made her high risk of two things. Number one is that she had uh, blockages on both sides. Okay. So that's interesting based on uh, what we were talking about. Can she tolerate the flow reversal? Right. Well, this lady has has blockages on both sides. And she tolerated the flow reversal without an issue. Wow. Okay. And so that's actually one of the things that they uh, is considered high risk, meaning including them to have this procedure is if if the other carotid is occluded or or you know has a high grade stenosis requiring a treatment. Okay. Those patients, even those patients, can tolerate the flow reversal. Wow. Okay. Um, and she did. Uh, she did fine. Uh, that's, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. She did fantastic. Great. That she has absolutely zero uh, issues tolerating the procedure. Great, great. She went home the next day uh, and, and did well. The other patient um, was born in 51, so 16, he was... 69, 68. Uh, 68? Yeah, 68. And, and he had uh, emphysema and lung disease. Okay. Um, and he also had a high lesion. Did you call me? Um, and he, and he, he also had a high lesion, so he was surgically high risk because the lesion was high, making, yeah, making, uh, making surgical access difficult. Okay. Just for sure, because accessing the carotid would be difficult um, because his actual lesion is high in the neck. Right. Um, and he also had uh, uh, lung disease, which makes him medically high risk. Right. So these patients weren't particularly old patients, right? They were pretty young, and and uh, but they yeah. had they had underlying health serious health issues, right? I mean, correct, correct, yes. And and the, and the, uh, the 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 woman was uh, diabetic too. You mentioned right? Uh, the woman, diabetic smoker, yeah, and diabetic. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, which one was the long? Well, fourteen minutes versus eight minutes. It's not. I mean, yeah. Which one yeah, was the? the the first one was a female. Okay, yeah. And that was and that was just again proceeding slowly because we, you know it was the first time we had done it. Okay. At the uh, in Baptist system, right? Um, you know that that includes uh, Bethesda. Um, and the whole was the first time doing this procedure. Right. But uh, Bethesda had done it before, or no? Do we know? Or? No, they have not. Okay, they have not. I know. I know the surgeons. They everybody's interested in doing the procedure. Of course, yeah. Um, and and, um, and it, uh, go ahead. And you know, one of the interesting things about the procedure is that you know, with the, uh, uh, I, you know, um, 
vascular surgery is uniquely kind of. Hello, doctor. I think you. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm losing you a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. No, no I, I hear you now. I'm in the hospital. All yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you need a unique combination of endovascular skills and surgical skills. Right. You know, that's, that's what's required for this procedure. Um, okay. Uh, and so, the, uh, but, 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 but in those hands, it's a very safe procedure. Right. So, one of the things that's different in this in carotid stenting, traditional carotid stenting, um, is that there's a lot of papers that show that there is a, a learning curve with the traditional carotid stenting, meaning that people start getting good results, mean reasonable results, um, after they've done, you know, a high volume of cases. Um, right. With this procedure, um, we see good results from the very first case. Right. How, how many, uh, I don't know, percentages are hard to discern here, but I mean, up, up, up patients with carotid st uh, stenosis, uh, how many would you think would qualify for this? I mean, I guess they have to be higher risk, right? Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, the, the truth is that blood pressure with carotid disease are high risk. So, yeah. um, you know, just talking to colleagues at other institutions, like the, the, um, mostly at university hospitals, right? they see that about, you know, somewhere between 40 to 50% are done with uh, TCAR and, you know, 50 Sixty percent are done with traditional surgery. Okay, so about so half and half. It's, it's almost half and half. half, and half. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. That and it, one more thing on the on the stenting portion of this, mm -hmm. the stent is placed mm -hmm. through the the neck, correct? Not not the traditional groin, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so it's still a carotid stent. So, so you know, who should not get this procedure? Right. Would be people who are not, should not have a stent. Meaning people who have very uh, hard calcified lesions that the stent won't open up because it's so you know. So that lesion needs to be treated with surgery. Right. Um, you know, because it, it, the, the hard calcified lesion can be taken out surgically. Uh, right. And it can be done surgically, so to speak. But but the um, but that's somebody that you wouldn't want to necessarily stent, or somebody whose carotid lesion is low in the neck, where there's not enough length to, you know, get the wires and, and catheters in to, to deploy the stent. So, yeah, the lower in the neck may, may, may preclude them from having this procedure, but in the case of one of the two cases, you had a high, high lesion, and that was okay. Yeah, yeah which would actually made them anatomically not a good candidate for... Right. For, for endodirectomy. So a high lesion is good for TCAR. A low lesion is good for surgery. Great. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I, keep hearing, I keep reading the MPS, the, the Neural Protection System. Is this a branded system that was approved by the FDA or, or is it? Uh, yeah, it's a branded system. So, so there have been other uh, floor reversal systems, but this one in particular is called the Silk Road uh, Floor Reversal System. Um, which is delivered directly via the carotid. Right. Um, and uh, this is right now is is patented by Silk Road. Silk Road. And this was was this the one uh, approved a couple years ago or by the FDA or I believe. Or? Um, yeah, it's definitely been approved by the FDA. I don't know exactly when, but I know I'm okay. guessing around 2015 or 16. Right. I yeah, I look it up. Been a, a huge risk. I mean, nowadays you're having. Um, you know, virtually every vascular surgery fellowship in the country is training people to do this procedure. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it makes uh, it makes perfect sense though, if you look at if you see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so two cases so far. Everything everything good. Uh, and moving forward, you will we'll be doing more as a system here. Uh, yes. Uh, correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and so and, they, and 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 the best thing are the results, um, which. Uh, I can quote you, but if you get some of the, uh, you know, I, I can contact you with so Road, but you know, the, the giving you the exact numbers, but the, the stroke rates are lower than carotid stenting, traditional carotid stenting, right. and uh, equal, and definitely not any worse than traditional carotid surgery. Yeah, I was, I, I saw a study uh, not to, uh, last year, yeah. I think. I saw a study there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it said, yeah. 
uh, which is good. I have a... Right. Okay, doctor, thank you. I mean, let me, uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll, I'll let you go now, and then I'll, I'll, I'll put something together and, and send it, email it to you. Uh, what's your best email? Uh, or, uh, My... Hello? Okay. Hey. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead now. Uh, this, this part of the hospital has bad reception. <laughs> uh, J U A N J A R L O S. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Okay, Juan Carlos. Pereda. P E R E D A. Okay. At yahoo.com. So it's your full name at yahoo.com. Correct. Juan Carlos Pereda at yahoo.com. Great. Okay. Um, oh, I'll text you too uh, once I get something together. Um, uh, and uh, if I have any questions, I'll, I'll give you another text. Uh, uh, and thank you very much. Great, great, great stuff. Great work. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll okay, make sure great. everybody knows about it. <laughs> okay, and then also uh, credit, uh, you know, watch Dr. Watch and, and others on the team. Dr. I think Dr. Kang. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Libby Watch. Uh huh. Um, you know, her and I were the primary surgeons. Right. And then uh, and Dr. Stephen Kang is also trained um, uh, and, and is part of the team. And Stephen Kang. K-A-N-E, right? Or? K-A-N-G. Oh, N-G, I'm sorry. Okay. K-A-N-G, uh, Kang. Stephen Kang. Okay. So. Thank you very much, doctor. We'll be, uh, we'll be, I'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Very good. Okay, thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye.